What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to add a color picker to our tree base app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add a color picker to our tree base app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. The runtime fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, we are basically done with this tree base app. In this video, though, I want to play around a little bit and add a cool little color picker. So you see, I've added a menu, and we can change the primary color to, I don't know, something like that. Then <laughs> we can change the secondary color to, I don't know, something like that. And then we've got the highlighted color. We can change that to. I don't know, something like that. That is atrocious, but <laughs> you get the idea. We could change the color around this thing to whatever we want. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So so let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the ping comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with, I don't know, almost 200 other Kinter videos. So if you haven't checked that out, take a look at that. So, okay, I've done videos on the color chooser lots of times in the playlist. So check back in the playlist if you don't really know how to use this thing. I'm not going to go into it in great detail in this video. We're just going to use it, right? So like I said, go check out those past videos if you want to learn more about it. But for our purposes, we're just going to use it here. So first we need to import it. So let's go from tkinter. We want to import the color chooser, right? And that's all we need to do. So, all right, let's come down here and I'm going to add a menu. So let's add menu to the top of the program. And that's let's call it my underscore menu. And that's going to be a menu, we want to put it in root. So let's go root dot config. And let's set the menu to my underscore menu. Okay, so I'm gonna make the app a little bit bigger, let's say 550 just to give it a little bit more width, since we're going to put a menu on there. Otherwise, things are going to get a little scrunched together. So okay, let's come down here. And I don't know, before we do any of this stuff, let's configure our menu. So what do we want here? So let's create a menu called option underscore menu. And we'll set that equal to our menu. And then this will be my underscore menu. And we want to set the tear off equal to zero. And the tear off is those little lines that are at the top of a menu. Uh, we don't have them. Maybe I'll set that to one later to show you what it is. But we generally don't want those little lines, those little dots at the top of our menu. So I'll take that off. So then let's go my underscore menu dot add underscore cascade. And I've done menus lots of times in lots of videos in the playlist. So if you don't know what a menu is, go watch those videos, check the playlist for those and, uh, and learn all about them there. So we want to set the label to equal and let's have this say options. And this is a lowercase l. I know it kind of looks like a capital L, but that's lowercase. And we want to set the menu equal to our option underscore menu. So this is what's going to appear at the top of our program. Now we can click this and have a drop down menu and put some stuff in it. So what do we want to put in the drop down menu? Let's say drop down menu. So let's go option underscore menu dot add underscore command. And now we want to label and set that equal to something. And we want to command and we'll set that equal to something. There we go. So I'm going to copy this two, three, four times. And for this one, we want to just exit the program. So let's just say exit. So for our command here, we can just go root dot quit. Now, sometimes this doesn't work. If you're using idle, you're gonna to have to Google how to do it. I don't remember how to do it in idle for root dot quit to work, but it's a thing and you can Google it. So above this one, let's put an option underscore menu dot add underscore separator. So I'll put a little bar uh, between this exit and these other commands. So what do we want here? So let's have this one say change primary color. Let's have this one say change secondary color. Or maybe we could just put primary color, secondary color, not to belabor it. And here let's put highlight color. Okay. So inside of here, let's create some commands. We want this command. Actually, we don't want quotation marks at all here. We'll call this one primary underscore color. We'll call this one secondary underscore color. 
and we'll call this one highlight underscore color. So now we just need to create these functions. So let's do that real quick. And these need to be up above here. So I don't know, let's do it right here. So let's define primary color. And I'm just going to pass for now. And let me just sort of do a couple of these. This one's secondary color. And this one is highlight color. So okay, let's save this and run it just to make sure this is running because we did a bunch of stuff real quickly there. So let's run python treebase.py. And when we do, we see we have this options menu that looks good. Remember, we resized this gave it 50 extra pixels. So everything fits nicely. Uh, we can click this, it says primary color, nothing happens, secondary color, nothing happens, highlight color, nothing happens. And we've got our little separator bar there that looks good. And we can do exit. If you're curious about what that tear off thing was, we could fix that real quick. Set that to one, run this guy again. And now you see there's this, this thing at the top, that's a tear off. So it's a tear off thing. You can play around with this and make this whole menu tear off and you can move it. We don't want to deal with that. And I don't like the way that looks. So I always set that to zero to get rid of it. So I'll go ahead and change that back to zero. So okay, now we've got our functions, we've got our menu set up. Now we need to change this to actually do something. So how do we do that? Well, whenever this gets called, we want to pull up a color chooser. So let's create a variable, I'm going to call it primary underscore color. And let's set that equal to color chooser dot ask color. And then that's a function and we want to grab the one -th item. There's several things that the color chooser will return. And we want the HTML color code. And that's that's this one thing right here. So all right, let's go ahead and paste this in a couple times here. And instead of primary color, this is going to be secondary color and instead of highlight, instead of primary color here, this is going to be highlight color. So okay, let's go ahead and save this run it see what this looks like. So we got our options, click primary color, boom, this thing pops up, we can pick any color we want. Or we can, you know, come down here and do a very specific color. Or we could come down here and really just, you know, type in anything we want into these colors to get as specific as possible. So when we click this, nothing actually happens yet, because we're not doing anything with that information. So now we need to do that. So let's come down here to where we sort of uh, set up the stripes to begin with. And that's right here, create striped row tags. And you can see we set the odd rows to white and the even rows to light blue. So we'll keep that by default when the program runs, but I can copy these, come up here, and underneath here, we could just sort of paste these guys in. Right? Now we need to make sure a color was chosen before we do anything. So let's go if primary color, then do all of this stuff. Because let me show you here, if we run this, it's possible to open this thing, right? And then not click a color and click cancel. And if that happens, it's not returning a color. So we don't want to do anything if that happens. So that's what that if statement will do. It'll say only if there's a primary color that's been selected, do we want to run these things. And we don't want this is the primary color. So we don't want the odd row, we want to mess with the even row. And instead of, you know, designating a specific color, Instead, let's pass in this variable. So let's come down here and just boom, just like that. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, run it, see if that worked. Uh, there we go. Let's go options, primary color, and let's change this to bright red. Oh, that's horrible. And we do boom, it changes just that easy. So now we have the white one still to do. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be very easy. We can just copy all of this and come down here to the secondary one and paste it in. And we should probably uh, pick color. Let me just pop in some comments really quickly here so it doesn't get out of hand. And then this one, let's say update tree view, same thing here. There we go. So okay. Now here we don't need this, so I'll get rid of it. And here we need to switch this. So this one, we can get rid of we want to do the odd row one here. So again, this is not primary color, this is going to be secondary color. 
And once we pick that color, we can just pop it in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, run it, see if that worked. So we wanna change the white, which is the secondary color. We wanna change it to yellow. Boom, there it is. We can change the primary color to a darker yellow. Ooh, that is horrible. <laughs> Maybe an even darker, something like that. Yeah, that's better. Whatever, that works. Now we just have this highlight color one. So how do we change that? Well, that was a little bit different. So let's head back over here and let's kind of scroll down here and look and see how we set that originally. And we set that originally right here. We changed the selected color. And we did that with a style.map. We set our tree view and just set this, the background color to selected. And then we gave it a color. So we could just copy this whole thing and bring it back up here to our highlight color thing. And let's update tree view color. Maybe this one should be color too. Same thing there. And down here for the highlighted color guy, we just paste in all that stuff. And there we go. But again, we need to say if highlight underscore color, then do all of this stuff. Okay. But instead of passing in the exact color, we want to, of course, pass in this highlight color. Boom, there we go. So, okay, I think that looks good. Yeah, all right, so let's save this, run it, see how that looks. So we can, we have a selected color now. If we come up here and click highlight color, uh, let's change this to red. Boom, now it's red. I can click around and it still works. So let's run through all of these again, make sure this is working. So let's just do sort of dark pink. Ugh. <laughs> Secondary color, we'll go lighter pink. Ugh. And for a highlighted color, we'll go sort of darker pink. All right, that is horribly ugly, but it works. And uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right, uh, so just a little thing to give this a little more flair, a little more style, a little more control. I like having a little menu up here that you can do different things. We've got our exit, we can change our colors. We've got this set to options. Maybe you would change it to color options, make it a little more specific. Uh, I'll leave that to you, name it whatever you want. But I think that's pretty much it for our TreeBase app. We've done a lot of stuff. We've got update record, add record, remove all records, remove one selected, remove many selected. We can still move these up and down inside the tree view. We can clear our entry boxes. You can change the colors. I don't know what else there's left to do. Uh, if there's something else you want me to do with this app, let me know in the comment section below. If there's some interesting selections, I'll dive into it and keep going. We've been working on this for, I don't know, month and a half, two months now. So maybe it's time for something new anyway. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. Nice little handy app and uh, not that hard to do really. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.